Hi, this is James Gardner, the Sydney Tech Geek, at CinemaCon 2019, and I'm at QSC. And you know, it's been a big year for QSC, like they've been releasing things steadily, but I really see a culmination of a lot of technologies and a lot of um, synergy between all the things they're doing today. They're doing a lot more things, media blocks, uh, more of the audio, and, and, and also investing into the immersive audio stuff coming down the track. And that's led to a lot of interesting, really, IT coming into the industry of doing your cinema. Now, I've got Barry here, of course, well known, and, and Linda. Laura. Laura, sorry, uh, from QSC. And we're going to talk about a few of the interesting aspects. So we're going to cover quite a few things today. But first of all, um, let's have a look at their first, uh, well, their, their new announcement at the show this year, which is their new CMS, which we'll, we'll just zoom in here, have a quick look. Um, as you can see here, it's got 10 gigabit networking on it. Um, Laura was just telling me before. How fast did we ingest a, a, a movie just before, Laura? Uh, we have a, a, about a 200 giga, uh, gigabyte movie that we're ingesting in about eight minutes, uh, and that includes the verification process. So the ingest actually takes about five or six minutes, and then a few minutes for uh, verification. And that's actually happening during playback of, of another feature of another clip. Well, that's, that's just astounding, and uh, I'd love to be able to do that with my cinemas, to check everything's going very quickly and go home. Uh, but those are just some of the advantages of going to these new um, new technology media blocks. Um, but I also want to talk about, um, I was talking to Barry before, um, there's a lot of new um, IT level uh, sort of ideas coming into the area of um, production. and. QSC is very well known for their audio over Ethernet and all those sort of ideas. And Barry will take us through quickly how that is changing the way we are going to be running our audio and the quality of our audio in our cinemas. Well, uh, I'd say it was about uh, 10, 12 years ago, uh, QSC introduced our QSIS, uh, QLAN technologies to the general AV marketplace. Uh, we saw that there was going to be a convergence of AV and IT technologies. So we built QSIS on standard a uh, IT technologies. It, it runs on standard gigabit ethernet, it uses Linux, it uses Intel processors instead of dedicated DSP processors. And our vision was that as AV and IT converged, uh, we would be using IT platforms for audio processing, uh, video uh, processing, uh, audio and video routing, control and monitoring, uh, all over IT-based hardware. And uh, at the show now, we really have uh, a whole set of solutions for AV over IT. Uh, besides our CMS 5000, which is QLAN enabled, we can actually just plug the, uh, the media block straight into the network, straight into a gigabit network, and get up to 64 channels of DTSX rendered audio right out into the QSIS network. Uh, we have a new line of switches. Uh, they're, uh, they're made by Dell, and they are uh, enterprise-grade switches. Uh, we have different sizes uh, available, uh, 8 to 48 por uh, ports. Uh, and then we uh, also, brand new at the show, is our new NV32H, which is a network video endpoint. It is capable of being an encoder or a decoder, so you can plug HDMI sources into it, encode that video, transmit it over a gigabit network using a proprietary uh, video codec created by QSC called Shift, and uh, it optimizes the network bandwidth depending upon the signal that you're transmitting. And then at the back end, you can have a box configured as a decoder box and then feed that HDMI output uh, out uh, off the network. So it's all controlled and routed by QSIS. Oh, okay. So, but the technology is really good, but I like to, in my video, say, okay, there's a nice box. What, it does, what does it do for me as a cinema owner? Mm -hmm. So let's quickly just discuss that. So I was discussing with you before. Mm -hmm. You could have these decoder boxes at all your cinemas or in all the um, screens. Right. And you'd have one encoder box, at, for example, at a central location. Mm -hmm. And you may have a number of satellite or playback devices in that mm -hmm. central location. Yes. And then you could feed them to one or multiple locations. Yes. So uh, you can go uh, one input, uh, basically, to many outputs. Uh, the, the boxes themselves actually have three HDMI inputs, so you could have up to three sources feeding any given box. Wow, three at a time. So uh, you could have a satellite receiver, you could have a Blu-ray player, and, and uh, you know what other source you wanted uh, going into the box. 
And if they were 1080p, you could encode all three of those and have them available on the network. If it was a 4K uh, uh, signal, then you can only encode one at a time. There's only enough bandwidth for one 4K signal versus uh, three 1080p. Uh, and then at each screen, you could choose which signal you're going to receive and output to the projector. Another option that we have with QSIS uh, is QSIS is really uh, very popular in the corporate AV and conferencing world. It has integration into soft codecs, it has VoIP telephone interfaces, uh, so you could actually turn your cinema into uh, a teleconferencing uh, room. You know, you could actually wow. have, uh, you can use AEC, acoustic echo cancellation, on microphones, uh, so that you can uh, you know, have two-way teleconferences in the cinema, uh, just like you would in a corporate boardroom. And, uh, but you, you could, could also, you said before, you could feed a, a computer display. So if you had a computer down, yes. and they were doing a presentation uh, mm -hmm. off a computer. Yes, as long as you have a network connection, you could put one of these NV32s, uh, uh, say down behind the screen where the podium is, you could plug the laptop in, and then you could feed that to one or multiple auditoriums. If you needed uh, extra space because there were more people than, you know, than would fit in one auditorium, you could actually run it into multiple auditoriums at a time. Uh, so, uh, you know, QSIS is more than just an audio processor. I know when we got into the, the cinema market with QSIS, it was really focused on, on being uh, uh, effectively an audio processor for immersive screens. Uh, but it's really so much more. It, it has complete control capability. We have a UCI creator. We have control scripting capability. Uh, anything that can be controlled over an RJ45 Ethernet jack, we can control it. So let's go, like I, I like talking about mm -hmm. examples of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So one thing I heard before that a lot of the Dolby Cinema or Dolby Atmos solutions are using QSIS. Uh, yes. Wh why, why is that? Well, uh, a great many of the uh, Atmos installations uh, choose to go with QSIS uh, because it makes the integration so much easier, uh, especially if you're using QSC speakers. So uh, we just have a simple network connection to the CP850 or the IMS3000, and we get over AES67 into the QSIS core, we get all, all up to 64 channels, and then we can do all of the routing, crossovers, volume control, monitoring all, all the amplifiers. Uh, one thing that uh, many of our competitors do not provide is the ability to monitor every aspect of the, of the signal chain. We can monitor the outputs from the 850, we can monitor the outputs of our DSP, we can even monitor the outputs of the amplifiers themselves. So just on those points, so we're talking here, um, we're talking about here, QSC does all the standards, basically Dante, all these things. Mm -hmm. But we're talking before how, even though you do all these standards, mm -hmm. you still use your own proprietary solution. Yes. Now, the reason for that proprietary solution we were discussing is that um, standards are all well and good, and standards are usually created to answer the need of the many. Yes. yes. Right? Um, well, if you're doing a specific implementation, you may have a custom requirement, and that's where your proprietary... So tell us how your system works on top of that to improve the situation. Well, we basically uh, support the other standards, like Dante and AES67, for getting audio information in and off of the QLAN network. But when we are talking between QSC devices, whether it's between the amplifier and a QSIS core or between a CMS 5000 and, and the QSIS core, uh, we have to do a lot of other control and monitoring information. So uh, that's all part of the QLAN specification. Uh, it's not just an audio transport, it's actually the control and monitoring as well. And uh, So, for example, a lot of the telemetry about if a speaker's behaving properly, Yes. Yeah, you can absolutely. get warnings, you can get other issues to help you yeah, identify. Yeah, we have a full you know, Nyquist representation of the voltage going out as well as the current going out. So we can do fault monitoring, we can do, you know, is the amplifier turned off? I mean, sometimes it's as basic as, basic as that. Is the is the speaker blown? I mean, we That's get exactly all that. Right. It's, it's so important. You know, are we clipping? Yeah. It's yeah. so important in the future of cinema because, you know, unfortunately we're going very autonomous mm -hmm. and the techs on, on at site are becoming rare and only visiting on a rare occasion. Mm -hmm. Having the ability to do very full and thorough remote diagnostics is a very big key to the future of the, the way we're going to do cinema. Yeah, and the thing that's now being added to QSIS that uh, has been uh, is going to be shipping soon is our on top of QSIS. I mean, QSIS you might have a QSIS environment in your theater and your particular location, 
On top of that, now we have a cloud-based uh, system called Reflect wow. that basically you can monitor your devices all over your, uh, not only this one venue, but all over the country, all over the world from one location. Um, so, and you can basically broadcast firmware updates. So is that, is, that, is that feature, um, uh, how do you get access? You just get, is it, uh, you have to just pay a service fee yes. or what is? It's, it's called QSIS Reflect and it is a software as a service. So it's a, it's a cloud-based subscription for controlling and monitoring your QSIS uh, cores. And uh, we uh, have made some technology announcements on it and it will actually be shipping uh, a little later this year. Yeah. Uh, in, targeted at the corporate AV market first, but we intend to uh, repurpose that into uh, more cinema-specific applications uh, as we go. Uh, you know, the other thing that's, that's really great about QSIS is that not only can we get some basic status information back for the, the engineers, but they can actually dive deep into the system remotely. Uh, we have a feature called Signal Probe, and uh, you know, engineers can actually log into the system from home and use the Signal Probe in the design and, and actually hear the audio at every stage of the, of the processing. So they can know in advance, you know, is it maybe if the sound uh, problem could be caused by a blown loudspeaker or is it actually some distortion? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's the thing. Yeah. Uh, when I tell people about um, uh, a lot of the stuff that I've put into my cinemas, it's very much about you need to know exactly what you're going to do to fix this location before you leave. Yes. Right? Exactly. And one of the highest costs of service is the callback. You know, you really cannot afford to go to Especially a location my twice. locations are seven hours plus away from yes. my where I'm well. So if mm -hmm. if I go there and have the wrong part, mm -hmm. it's a two day affair. Yes. Right. Yeah. So and I believe that, you know, some of these activities, some of these tools mm -hmm. are what are going to make it us allow us to actually put cinemas in locations which we haven't been able to put cinemas in before. Yeah. And that's one of the big pushes I have for this year and, mm -hmm. and having a look at these technologies because those locations mm -hmm. where we haven't put those cinemas, mm -hmm. that's just money left on the table for exactly. ticket sales. It's, you know, we just have to put a cinema there and we will sell more tickets because yeah. those people will have access to those tickets. And so, the, the digital cinema conversion has been sort of a double-edged sword for cinema owners because uh, with the digital conversion and the increase in automation and things being run remotely uh, has really caused a situation where very often there's no local theater staff that has any technical capability that's right. at that's, all. That's exactly right. Whereas before you might be able to get on the phone with the projectionist and talk him through something or get enough information to diagnose the problem and know which gear you should bring. Yes. Um, now, now the gear has to be its own projectionist. The gear has to be able to tell you yes. what's wrong with it. It needs to be able to tell you that from 3,000 miles away that's in some right. cases. Yes. Yes. Anyway, uh, that's, I think that's enough for today. There's a lot for uh, the viewers to take on. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to me at CinemaCon. Anyway, okay. thanks Barry. Thanks Thank Laura. Laura. Uh, this is James Gardner, the CineTech Geek at CinemaCon 2019 at QSC. Bye for now.